Hello folks. So how do I actually go about creating a player and enemies? Well, there's a number of different ways to do this, but I think the easiest way would be to use classes. So I'll come down here where I've got my functions defined within the code uh, and just above my main game loop, and I'll have a little section here where I'll create my classes. So the first one that I need is a fighter class. So I say class fighter, and then I begin by setting up my constructor. So I say define oops, init, and within here is where I want to put in all the arguments that are going to be used for my different instances of this class. So you start off always with self, and then after that, any additional arguments. So what I need here, for example, is going to be the x and the y coordinates where these fighters are going to go. So I say x and y, then I need to know what they're called. So the next argument is name. Uh, after that, I want to know how much HP I want to give them, how much health. So I say max underscore HP. And then lastly, I want to give them a strength value and I want them all to have a certain number of potions. Now note that I'm not actually setting these to any particular variable. And the reason for that is when I'm actually creating the instances of the fighters, when I create the knight and I create the bandits, I can change these to whatever I want at the time. And each of those is going to have its own properties. So this section here is essentially just a create character uh, setup. So I'm just putting in all of the properties that would apply to any particular fighter and then when I actually create the instances, that's when I define what those properties are going to be. So here, I just need to type all this out. So I need to say self.name equals name. So essentially, all of these variables are now going to be put into the class. Uh, the next one is self.maxhp equals maxhp. Uh, so there's a little bit of typing here. Uh, then I set a self HP, which I also set to max HP to start with. I'll explain why I've done this uh, when I come to use it. So the next one is self strength. So basically all of these arguments that I'm feeding through, I need to make sure that I assign them to a self first of all. Then it's self start potions, start underscore potions equals potions. And I'm going to do the same thing here again, self potions equals potions. So I've done the same thing as what I've done with my health. I've got two variables for the same thing. And then I want to define a self.alive. Note that I didn't actually feed this through in an argument. I just need this to be set to true at the very beginning. So each time I create an instance of the class, it starts off with an alive being set to true. And the next thing I want to do is actually load in the images. So I say self.image, and I do this in the exact same way as I've done the images up here. It's just now instead of loading in within this section, I'm loading it within the class. So here I'll say self.image equals pygame dot image dot load and now again if I go back to my directories and come back up I've got my code here then I've got an image subfolder and within here I've got a knight and a bandit subfolders within here I've got the different animations and at the start all I'm looking for is idle I'm going to make the static to begin with uh, and then add in animations later so the first one I want is with an image forward slash knight forward slash idle and it's zero png so whatever you've named your folders to, make sure that you put that in here correctly. So I say image forward slash, and I've already forgotten what they were called. Image forward slash, so in my case it's night and then idle. So I'll say here night forward slash idle. And at the moment I just want 0.png, which is just the first one in that instance. So that's going to load in my image. And then from that image, I need to create a rectangle. So we say self.rect equals self.image.get underscore rect. So this rectangle, you're not going to actually see onto the screen. The image is what you're going to be seeing. But the rectangle is kind of a hidden property. Essentially, it's going to take the width and height of that picture. And then it's going to allow me to position it wherever I need to on the screen. So that's what's going to come next. We say self.rect.center equals x and y. So x and y are these arguments that I'm taking here and I'm going to put them into my rectangle and essentially it just means that it's going to position that image at the x and y coordinates that I've given here. So that's pretty much the fighter class constructor set up. However, there's one thing that I want to change here. Now you notice I've got within here a directory for my knight image. The problem is I want to have uh, other images. I want to have bandits as well as the knight. So I could do that by adding different classes. So I could create either child classes or maybe I can just have a knight class and then a bandit class, but then that's just too much copying. It's just going to be duplicating the same thing over and over. What I can do instead, if I know that my folder structure is the same for the other enemies, which it is, I've made sure that I've got the same number of images. If I go into the bandits, for example, they are set up in the exact same way. So they've got these idle images and it's all in the same structure. The only difference is 
the name of the folder that it starts with. So it's either Knight or Bandit. Now remember, I'm feeding in a name here. So what I could do is take that name and put it in here instead. So when I come to create the instance of this class, I can call it a Knight or I can call it a Bandit, and it's automatically going to load the correct image for me. So I can replace this with curly brackets, and in here I just put self.name. So that's going to take this name, which I've defined uh, as set to my self.name variable, and it's going to load it from that correct directory. And just to complete this, I need to make sure that I put a little f at the beginning here. So this is uh, Python's string formatting. Now, this only works in the latest version or the later versions of Python. Uh, so if you're getting errors when you run this code, then just make sure that you're updating to, to the latest version of Python. Not Pygame, but Python. Otherwise, you will uh, get an error here. So with that loaded in, I just want to make sure that the code, uh, I haven't made any errors. So I'll just run it. That's fine. Nothing, of course, shows up. Uh, but I just wanted to make sure that there's no syntax errors here. Uh, and I haven't called this yet, so it wouldn't even tell me. So now that the fighter class is set up, and I've got this initial constructor, I want to add a draw method for this. So I want to actually be able to have a way of showing it onto the screen. So I just create a new method here, and I say define draw, and the only argument I need is self. So whenever you create methods within a class, you always need to put in self as a minimum. I don't need any other arguments for this because it's just going to be taking its own image and putting it onto the screen. So I do this in the exact same way as I do with the rest of them. I say screen dot blit, and then I need to give it the image. So here it's going to be self dot image, and the position for it is going to be self dot rect because, like I said, the rect is what takes the properties of the image, then it's positioned, and that's how you determine where to put your image onto the screen. So with these all defined, nothing actually happens until I call them. Now, first of all, I need to create instances of these class. So the class itself is pretty much just a placeholder. It's It contains all this information, but until you actually create instances of it, nothing happens. So I want to create uh, a knight, first of all. So I can come down here and I can say knight equals, and it's going to be an instance of the fighter class, so I call fighter. And then I just need to give it all of these arguments here. So I ignore self, and I need to make sure that I give it all of these arguments. If I don't, then I'm going to get an error because I don't have enough arguments and they don't match up. So the first one is my x and y coordinates. So let's just say 200 on the x coordinate, 260 on the y coordinate. And then this is the important bit. I need to give it a name, and the name is a string. So I'm going to call it knight with a capital K because that matches my folder structure. That matches the name of that folder. So it's going to go into here, and it's going to pull the correct image for me. Then after that, I need to give it the health. So I'm going to say he's got 30 HP, he's got 10 strength, and he'll start off with three potions. Okay, so now if I run this code again, I will create an instance of this class. So now I do have a knight set up with all of these properties, but of course I'm not calling this draw method anywhere, so he's not coming up on the screen. So let's start add that in. I can now come down here, and just underneath all of this, I can say update fighters, or rather I'll just say draw fighters. So now because I've got this instance of it, I can call the knight instance, and it's going to inherit all of these methods. Well, at the moment there is only one method, and that's the draw method. So I can just say knight.draw, and it's going to call this method here. Come down here, say knight.draw, and if I run this again, it creates that instance, and then it calls the draw method, and it shows them onto the screen. Uh, unfortunately, he is absolutely tiny, so I need to make sure that I scale him up first of all. So I'll come back up here, and I could just go into the image itself and scale up the images, but there's a whole bunch of them, and it would just take far too long to do that unless I automated it. So instead, I'm just going to load them in and then scale them here. So let's just say self.image equals pygame.transform.scale, and then I need to give it the image back into it. So the image I want to scale is the same one. So it's self.image. Actually, to make this less confusing, what I could do is just change this to an image variable. So I'll just say img, I don't give it a self, I'm just loading in a temporary image, and then my self.image becomes the scaled version of that img variable. And then I need to give it the x and the y coordinates for how big it's actually going to be. So in here, I could actually put in an, an x and a y for the sizes, but I'm just going to be lazy, and I'm just going to say that I want to take the image and just blow it up by a certain fraction. So I can just take how big it is right now. So I can say image.getWidth, seeing as this is the x coordinate, and just multiply the existing width by three. And then for the y size, just say image.getHeight, and multiply that by three as well. 
So if I run this again, it's just going to scale the whole picture up by three times. And there you go. The knight has now appeared. There's no animation. It's just a static image for now. Uh, but what I can now do is add in the fighters as well, the enemies. Now the good thing about using these classes is that the tedious part of it is kind of is already done. I've set this up once. Now I can just make as many fighters as I need, and then I can change all these variables for them. So each of the fighters is going to follow the same structure, but it's going to have different variables. It's going to have its own properties, and that's where classes and instances really come into their own. So I can say bandit one equals, and again it's an instance of the fighter class. So then I just repeat the process. I'll put them an x coordinate of 550, a y coordinate of 270. Because uh, I think these images are a slightly different size. And then here I need to make sure that I give them a different name. So these are going to be called bandit, which means that when it comes to loading the image, it's going to take the bandit folder instead and then go into idle and pick the right one for me. Uh, in terms of health, well, I'm going to give them 20. I'll make them a little bit weaker because I'm going to make two of them. A bit less strength and only one potion. And then I just create a second one. So I'll call this guy bandit2. And I'll put them a little bit over to the right hand side, so I'll say 700 on the x coordinate. But aside from that, everything else is exactly the same. So now I've got a couple of them, I will add them to a list just to make things a bit easier. So I'll say bandit underscore list, and this is going to be an empty list for me. And now I can add these bandits to them. So I can say bandit underscore list dot append. So this is just a Python list. And in here I put my bandit1. Then copy this down, do the exact same thing, and add in bandit2. So now, I know that there's only two of them, so it doesn't save that much time, but in reality what this means is you can iterate through your bandit list whenever you need to do something, rather than checking bandit1 and then bandit2. So both instances are created. If I load this, nothing actually happens. Because again, I've created the instances, but I haven't called their draw method. So I'm not telling Pygame to show them onto the screen. So that's where I come back down here, where I've got my draw fighter section, and I just need to add in the same thing down here. So I could type bandit one uh, dot draw bandit two dot draw, but because I've got that list, instead I'm just going to iterate through it. So I'll say for bandit in bandit underscore list, go through each of them, and then essentially because that bandit list just contains the instances, it means that I can call their methods here. I can say bandit dot draw. Now, I know that hasn't really saved me any code. I've still had to type two lines of code, but as I add more methods into it, it means that I just need to call it once in here because this is a loop and it's going to go through all of the bandits within the list. So let's run this again. And there you go. The bandits are now coming up up there. So that's all for now. Uh, in the next video, I'm going to add in animations uh, and I'll actually put in some kind of idle so that these guys bob up and down and uh, uh, work on that in the next video. But for now, if you found this useful, then please do leave a like. And if you'd like to stay up to date with these, then feel free to subscribe. Thanks for watching.